Hi, this is Nisha here. We're going to look at Melanie Klein in part two of object relation. So first of all, we have to remind ourselves that she views early development about being how the baby negotiates the world around them. The world around them is chaotic, full of deprivation and disruption, and this causes anxiety. And so she talks about there being two phases of development, and both of these phases are basically different ways to firstly experience anxiety, deal with the anxiety and manage the anxiety. There are two different ways of dealing with it. Now in the first phase she calls this a paranoid schizoid position and it really is about paranoid anxieties if you like. This is within the first three months and in the first three months the baby is attempting to manage this disruption and deprivation and anxiety that it feels in the world. Nothing is certain. The mother disappears and the mother doesn't know if the mother's coming back. When the mother's there it could be death. Do you know what I mean? It's, it's an anxiety at that level and babies try to ward off anxiety because sometimes you see them lying in their cot playing with something imaginary in the air and uh, with, their th with their hands or sucking their thumbs or whatever and Klein says that this is a way the baby wards off anxiety and attempt trying to attempt to manage this disruption and anxiety she says are crucial features of birth and early postnatal life so the baby has the urge to make sense of this chaos somehow and they do this by ordering their experience they, they can't live in this chaotic overwhelming state all the time so they have to move into this um ordering of their experience so what the baby does is it splits things into what is felt as good or what is felt as bad there's no neutral it's either good or it's bad this is a way of trying to make sense of everything around it things are either good or bad black and white um, if the baby is feeling um, okay in that moment the mum comes along she's the fairy godmother she's good if the baby is feeling hungry and starving and the mother comes along, she's the wicked witch. So things are either good or bad in that moment. There's no neutral zone, no experience of absence. They don't understand that. No experience of regret or loss. They don't understand that. So basically absence equals bad and relief equals good. And that's all it is. And they have to do that in order to survive this early stage of chaos. Now, there's always a reparation to both of these phases. So the reparation to the paranoid schizoid position is the splitting. Now, the splitting of things into either good or bad is part of the developmental process. They need to go through this. They have to go through this. And splitting enables uh, the um, ability to trust and love later on. Now, because the baby has had the experience of total good in the positive side of the split, you know, when the split is good a very good split there's no middle ground where it's quite nice it's if it's good it's very good if it's bad it's very bad don't forget so it's extreme good in that split and because the baby has had that experience of total good this is taken in this wonderful feeling of goodness is taken in internalized interjected and forms part of their self and forms their base sense of self it's important that they're able to really internalize and interject that total goodness um, because that is all um, that they're able then to feel everything is okay this is good this, this wonderful feeling is taken inwards and Klein describes this in this way the good breast is taken in and becomes part of the ego and the infant who was first inside the mother now has the mother inside himself you internalize the total good to form part of their sense of self now the paranoid schizoid position can move into adult life when we are under pressure for instance and stressed or whatever we might move into paranoia or various kinds of anxieties imagining the worst or getting paranoid about a person or a situation getting anxious about things um, maybe we start splitting things into good and bad some people are more prone to this than others if something bad happens to them that day then the whole day is bad or something bad happens everything's ruined now or why does it always happen or my life is always bad and never nothing ever good happens to me that kind of uh, experience of splitting or maybe there are destructive uh, angry persecutory feelings about the world around them and you know no reality focus if you like or or feeling needing they need power and control uh up to feel better about the world and that kind of thing so these is this is how the paranoid schizoid position plays out in adult life 
Now, the second phase of development is the depressive position, usually emerges roughly um, from around three months onwards, because don't forget the paranoid schizoid position is the first three months roughly. So it's after that, it's usually around the second half, somewhere thereabouts of the first year up to the first year, we see the depressive position emerging. And this is where the baby begins to experience inner and outer reality more clearly they are coming to terms with the worst of the paranoid schizoid anxieties they are starting to take survival as a given so mum yes she disappears but she has come back she does come back uh, I will get fed I won't be alone the repetitive actions um, that the baby's experienced so far are starting to allow it to take survival more as a given it's not going to die so there is less need for anxiety there's less need for splitting things into good or bad less need for projective defenses to keep anxiety at bay and the baby now starts to recognize these part objects as whole objects uh, and mum is the first object basically so the baby starts to realize that this this part object is actually a whole person this object that I've t at times hated and felt I wanted dis to destroy is a whole object that actually I love and means a lot to me and this is this is this is mummy kind of it's not feeling like that but it just realizes this, this thing I hated is a big thing that I actually like as well that brings about mixed feelings so this realization in itself brings about a new kind of anxiety the experiences of absence um, were usually the loss of this good object now so before that the absent was a, a depriving attack by something bad but now the absence is experienced as the loss of the good object this is the good object um, and instead of anger the reaction is grief and sadness that they've actually hated this object that they also love and interesting physiologically in the physical development of a baby they don't cry with tears before three months I don't know if you've noticed that they, they make these crying noises very strange noises if you like there's very penetrating noises but there are no tears coming out tears start to come out around three months onwards the babies then start to to cry with real tears and this is happening physically in line with Klein's depressive position so there is a reparation to this second phase just as there is with the first phase with the splitting and internalizing of the total good and and forming the sense of self now there is a reparation to this sadness and guilt that the baby feels towards the object that it loves so the baby realizes with shock that its destructive feelings were towards something it loved and needed and in a way, the baby is quite fearful of its own anger, that it's actually in a kind of shock and fear state that I've actually um, hated and, and been nasty to this love object. I'm bad. There's some, I'm bad in a way. And this feeling of I'm bad, Klein says, is at the core of depression. It gets taken on into our life later on and is the core of what we call depression Um I'm bad I, I I've been bad I've hated the object that is good to me that I've loved and then it feels a kind of depressive feeling here hence it being called a depressive position so at the end of the first year we see children acting out these kind of sad moments when you do child observation baby observation which a lot of people do when they go into their trainings they see occasional withdrawal they see sad expressions um, and Klein says at the end of the first year, the baby is capable of inner conflict, low self-esteem now, sadness and guilt. These are new depressive feelings that the baby is now capable of feeling. Don't forget her colleagues were against this. They thought this was absolutely shocking to say. Now, this guilt that it feels gives rise to repair. This is the reparation 
you need to repair this you've been bad you feel bad it needs to be repaired and the the, the repair is love love is the only thing that's going to mend this and you will see this getting played out young children will repeatedly work through their experiences of persecution of others uh, of loss of guilt and all sorts of negative feelings by trying to repair this you will see that tantrums will alternate with the absolute need to give you something or the absolute need to love you to give you a hug to show you affection to to demonstrate their love to you um maybe they've got a soggy biscuit they they they, they must give it to you they, there's an urgent need to give you something this is the urgent need to repair these difficult feelings in the depressive position um and it's very important as a parent and instinctively parents know this that you need to accept this um a giving of love expression of love or or giving of an object of some kind because they really are needing to feel that they have something good to give when you think you take it and you accept it and you eat it or you cuddle them or whatever you receive what they give you it's very important you receive what they're giving you you're basically conveying to them yes you are good you have something good to give you are good in essence you are a good person yourself is good everything is mirrored back so it's really important that you receive early on i think uh, people misunderstand this they think it's all about giving to your children give 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 to your children uh, and then you're doing well but you have to receive from them as well that's just as healing to um, receive what your child gives you and let them experience that and feel that that makes them feel that they are okay now here are some key terms that i'm summarizing for you some of them you know uh, and some you don't know so projection these are all klein uses all of these terms in relation to the baby so right back to the baby not just adults so projection are the aggressive envious feelings the bad feelings that are passed on to to the other uh, or repressed to the unconscious and so the baby does this early on when it doesn't know um, why it's feeling bad so it doesn't know if it's self or other that is bad so it's put on to the other uh, you know it doesn't understand that so that's the origins of projection if you like part object relating we've talked about because uh, a whole object is too big and too dangerous to relate to and, and, and not possible so we relate to small things which are safer and more manageable so that's natural part object relating and of course we can take that into adulthood adulthood in in good and bad ways and then splitting we've talked about how you split things into good and bad and uh, this, the baby does this in the paranoid schizoid position uh, and this enables the total uh, interjection of good but splitting things into good and bad can play out as an adult when we're under stress or under pressure and we are all or nothing in our thinking and you know this is not helpful when we're stressed or whatever so with certain clients you will be looking for the middle zone the neutral zone okay so it's not it's not going to be all bad or all good what is a neutral reaction to this and as the splitting diminishes the experiences get more balanced so the the bad side is less bad and the good side is less good because it's more balanced and reality focused you may have heard of the term transitional objects winnicott talks about them as well um, and this is ways uh, these are ways of dealing with separation these objects there are objects during transitional phases so for instance when the baby is weaned off the breast it will have a dummy or something else to to give it some some sort of uh, intermittent soothing or comfort so it's during that transitional time from moving from breast to no breast it's going to have a dummy for a while or maybe there's mum's not around as much so the a transitional object will be a soft blanket or a toy to comfort it maybe there's an anxiety about the dummy or mum or what it would general breastfeeding or whatever and they suck their thumb all these are transitional objects they are really ways of self-soothing and even that can be taken into adult life people are using their duvet as a as a, a transitional object if they're feeling unwell or stressed they regress and they they use something soft a toy or a blanket or something like that people even suck their thumbs and you will see that often people are putting a pen to their mouth or putting their finger to their mouth as they're thinking or something to do with their mouth and often this is a way of self-soothing uh, when they're sort of thoughtful or stressed or whatever so transitional objects can be in childhood and adulthood 
interjects. We've talked about that. This is where the outer world or objects uh, outside of ourselves are taken into the self and become part of the inner world. And again, that's come from um, interjecting the, the good split that we talked about earlier to form part of the self. And then this last one you will not have heard of, and that's projective identification. You would have heard of projection. But projective identification is literally where you identify with someone else's projection. So they projected something onto you that they can't feel. But what you are, you are now feeling it. This is different. You are identifying with it and feeling it for them. So aspects of the inner self that don't want to be acknowledged are literally induced in the other. OK, so if we apply that to client work, say you have a client that's bereaved but can't grieve and can't feel sad and can't feel emotions. They're talking about the death and it's very sad, uh, the content, and you are feeling very sad and upset in hearing the content content because you're feeling what the client can't feel. They've literally induced in you the feelings that they can't feel. Therefore, it becomes projective identification. There's no reason for you in your life to be feeling sad in that moment. So you know it reg it's regarding your client and it forms part of the counter transference. Now, here's a summary, a couple of pages of summary. Anal analysis must investigate the stages of infantile anxiety and aggressiveness. That's straightforward. When the mother satisfies the baby's hunger, the baby feels at one with the mother and not separate. This talks about the symbiotic relationship. The baby doesn't know anything about separateness just yet. Now, the process of mothering was not previously seen as important in psychoanalysis. Don't forget, and Bowlby takes this further with attachment theory later on. But the process of mothering was not looked at at all. So this is all new. And she's also saying that there are pre oedipal layers of personality development. On top of that, we need to look earlier on. Things are happening much earlier on. And again, this was new. So process of mothering and pre oedipal layers were not looked at just yet. Hunger is frightening. There's no understanding of the meaning of time and being patient. There's no understanding in, about tolerating frustration. There's no understanding that situations are temporary and are going to be soon followed by relief or pleasure as the milk goes down. That's the world of the baby. And that includes small changes in the immediate situation can suddenly be drastic. So it can be anger and discomfort one minute and suddenly blissful gratification another minute. This is the chaotic world of the baby that it tries to manage because it's producing uses anxiety. Now, the baby brings into the world two main conflicting desires, love and hate. And this is what they need to contend with because these feelings are constantly at war with another, one another. Because the baby meets a world which is satisfying and frustrating. Sometimes it's nice, sometimes it's bad. And this is the love and the hate aspect of each. Now, the mother is the first distinct object and the baby is able to love and hate that same object. We've talked about that. And then we've talked about how paranoid anxieties move to depressive anxieties uh, and this acknowledgement of separateness of harming the love object brings about a feeling of guilt and sadness uh, and this is a kind of death of that which can never be regained again they are never going to feel that total split again where everything in the world is okay nothing is wrong and this wonderful sense of goodness is internalized and form part of the self because you move into the depressive position you are never going to feel that split again in that way and it's a mourning and grief reaction to that which will never be regained now depressive anxieties are normal parts of development the mourning situation is seen as a productive period um, and this infantile depression can be seen in adults when they experience grief and loss. It's quite normal. The therapist's task with children is not to help socialize, and this is for the parents and the outside world. The therapist's task is to help the child face their deepest anxieties by naming them um, and working them out together via play. They would then be able to further resolve them in their own ways. And it's very interesting. So any attacks on toys or attacks verbally are essential parts of the work because the child is is releasing some of this anxiety and stress and, and so forth by 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 playing via the toys. This is their release. They don't have to talk about it rationally like we do as adults.
Psychological health is the capacity to see beyond what we are projecting, the ability to appreciate that there is a difference between the badness that we put out there in the world and what is really there. We have to know what is real and what we project, whereas ill health is when we induce a confirmation of our negative experience from our bad internal object relations. We are not clear about the objects, whether they are good or bad around us. We are too busy confirming our negative expectations. Here are some books to read. I hope you've understood this and I hope these two lectures have given you a much clearer idea on object relations and the work of Klein. I really hope you've got the gist of everything and I shall speak to you again soon. Bye.